Hello everyone, this is Coach Frank of Train 2.0, and today we start week two of how to stick handle like Patrick Kane. So last week we discovered the disconnect between commonly taught grips and the NHL pro grip, and that's what's going to allow us to really harmonize the hands this week. So if we take a look at Patrick Kane and his general flow, we see one thing that really separates him from the pack, and that is how loose his wrists are and how well energy flows throughout his kinetic chain. His hands are always in perfect harmony with what his feet and body are doing, and it's no wonder why loose wrists is something we all as players and coaches say. However, the way we teach, learn, and think about loose wrists needs to be more specific. Uh, it's yet another mechanic that we see misinterpreted and practiced in a counterproductive way. So before we get into how we should rethink teaching this mechanic, let's go over what we shouldn't be doing. So the next major misconception that we're going to blow up in this series is that the top hand controls the stick. Uh, so this idea basically involves the top hand, uh, forearm muscles contracting to extend and flex the wrist, manipulating the wrist, and then the bottom hand is free to slide and act as a pivot. Now if we take a look at this clip from last week, we can clearly see Kane's bottom hand sliding and his top hand pivoting. But leaving it at that would be a misinterpretation and training this would be counterproductive. Yes, you might get good at using your top hand and control the stick. Yes, you might make it to the highest levels of hockey but you'll never reach your potential as an elite stick handler. And not just that, this mechanic carries over to skating, shooting, and passing as well. So now let's take a look at the hidden mechanic that allows us to go beyond just loose wrists and really allows us to develop proper stick handling mechanics. And that hidden mechanic is wrist springs. So wrist springs are using the stretch reflex of the forearm muscles to bounce your hand back and forth. The NHL Pro Grip allows for this to occur. Uh, another key aspect of this grip is that the hands don't slide. Uh, so that is not in opposition to the hand coming off the stick or your hands moving around the stick. It's not in opposition to that. But if you're, when you're using a wrist spring mechanic, uh, your hand doesn't slide. Uh, and we'll find out more later about how those two ideas don't conflict. But for now, just practice it in a restricted manner um, and make sure that the bottom hands and the top hand, for that matter, don't slide. So let's take a look at what wrist springs look like in isolation. So right here, Jason's using the top hand wrist spring. And what you notice is, is that as that stick is getting driven across, it's going to lag behind this inner uh, wrist spring here. So you see this bend in the wrist here. That's what's driving the stick across. And we can see the same thing as he comes back in the other direction. Wrist spring is bent that way. Stick is over here. It gets dragged across. And when we watch Jason kind of switch hands, uh, you'll notice uh, wrist spring here, stick is lagging behind, uh, and it gets driven across. Now it's important to note that as you cross midline with this, uh, the lag effect will kind of catch up to where this, uh, uh, the wrist is uh, placed. And then if we watch the uh, The wrist spring in this direction. Now, once you feel this, you can't really unfeel it, feel it, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. Um, so there's not necessarily this bend here, but there is this bounce off of the outer forearm muscles. It's not a contraction. It's actually those forearm muscles there are getting stretched, and then they're kind of bouncing back, and that's what's driving uh, or pulling the stick across almost. Um, and we can see Patrick Kane here. Uh, in this clip, um, now this clip, it's, he's more juggling the stick back and forth between his hands, uh, but you can definitely see them working together too. So right here, we notice the top hand wrist spring, and that's a factor in driving the stick across. And you can also see the bounce off of the inner uh, forearms on the bottom hand too. And that's another factor in drawing that puck across. So you can see that there. Now, as he cradles the puck in this direction, you see he's got one hand on the stick. So this is a single wrist spring that's cradling the puck and it's driving the stick back in this direction. And as he centers his body over, um, things kind of come into equilibrium there. And it's important to note that a lot of players um, know how to move with their elbows and have their elbows drive the movement across. But when we really concentrate on making sure that our wrists are soft, and we focus in on these wrist springs, 
um, it's kind of like which domino falls first. If your wrists are very stiff and you're driving with your elbows or your upper body or your legs, um, those those the the wrists will be very stiff, right? And you won't be able to get that effortless movement. And um, what's odd about this is that the weaker or softer this link is at the wrists, the more connected your skating is with your puck handling. And it allows you to puck handle in the most effortless, smoothest way possible. And we can see that here in Patrick Kane's play versus Edmonton. Um, now, as he's coming across, this wrist spring up here is getting loaded in this direction. That's what's gonna prime the stick to come this way. And you can kind of see that his hand is a little bit opened up and that one's going to bend this way too. So the angles are a little off here, but that's what's really going to drive uh, this movement in this direction here. And you see that there. And now he's cradling the puck with that wrist spring. Stick's going to come this way. And you see here, you have wrist spring, and then a wrist spring that's going to drive the puck this way around the goalie. And now we see this wrist spring opening up and the bottom hand is going to come completely off the stick. And this wrist spring is going to shovel that puck into the net. Right there. And your coaching for this week is set the tone. And when I say set the tone, I mean set a relaxed tone, turn off the tension. Uh, wrist springs may be something that's very unnatural for you. I would liken it to kind of holding your hand over a hot stove. And before you even realize it's burning you, you your body has already pulled your hand back. This is about turning off the body's natural reflex to create tension and do something unorthodox. Hold that hand over the hot stove. Uh, so treat these drills as a warm up to, to last week's workout. Treat them as a deactivation warm up. Uh, so your top hand wrist spring, 30 reps for three sets, bottom hand wrist spring, 30 reps for three sets, and then the two handed wrist spring, 30 reps for three sets. Then you're gonna go back into last week's workout, which was stationary stick handle, 100 reps for three sets, and then the mobile stick handling, 100 reps for three sets. Do that for three to four days this week, record a video of some of your final sets, and then submit it to our Facebook. And that concludes week two, harmonizing the hands of how to stick handle like Patrick Kane. Make sure you check out the rest of our YouTube channel that's slowly becoming the Netflix of hockey. Connect with us on Facebook and submit your videos to our messenger. If you haven't already do it, we love seeing those videos. It gets us really motivated to put up more content like this and it helps us give you feedback and you can use that feedback to get better. Uh, and if you're interested in becoming a full member, check out our website, train2.0.com. All those links will be below. Uh, so get to work on this week's drills because next week it's all in the hips.